We've already covered an example of an input type of text, email, whatever you have, a standard input. Now we're going to look at things like checkboxes, radio buttons, selects, e.g. drop downs, all that good stuff that you're probably going to use inside of your app. So let's get started and we'll look at a checkbox. So I'm going to create out some X data in here. We'll leave it empty just for now. Let's define the checkbox out. So let's go ahead and create that out there. Again, we're going to get rid of the name and ID because we're not actually building a real app. And what we want to do is bind this to a piece of data and see what this turns up as. So let's go ahead and say X model and let's just say agreed. So this checkbox is just going to be whether we agree to some kind of thing or not. By default, of course, that's going to be false. Now, before we do this, actually, let's take a look at what value we get when we actually submit a input type of checkbox through. So either to just the browser or the server. So let's just go ahead and set this name to agreed, get rid of the ID and let's create a submit button in here or button type of submit and let's just say submit. So let's go over and give this a refresh. Let's check it, hit submit and you can see we get agreed on. Now if this wasn't agreed and we submitted it, so let's get rid of that in the query string quick, we would get nothing. So how does this handle inside of Alpine? Well, let's take a look. So again, we're going to bring this back to X model. We're going to output our X text as agreed. And let's see what like this gives us. So let's click it. And there we go. We actually get a true or a false value rather than an on or an empty value. So that's really, really useful. So for example, now what we can do that we have a Boolean back, we can use an X show to say, well, if the user has agreed, say you have agreed let's go over and there we go when we click it we get that back super simple otherwise what we would have to do is potentially compare this to a string value so it makes it a lot easier that behind the scenes this is being bound to a true or a false value e.g a boolean to take the example of checkboxes a little bit further let's go and just create another example out from scratch here so most of the time when you're working with checkboxes they're just going to be individual things that you want to check but sometimes these relate to a list of things. For example, if you're building a data table or some kind of list of items you want to check off, you're going to have multiple things in here. Let's see how this gets handled within Alpine. Again, let's bring X data in here just to initialize this and not do anything just yet. And let's create out several inputs with a type of check. And let's set the name here to record one and the ID to record one. And let's go ahead and just copy this down twice. So we'll change this to record two, obviously. And down here, let's change this to record three. Great. So what we want to do is have a list of things that have been checked. So we've got three things in here and we want to output which of these has actually been checked. So let's go up to X data and let's pull in records instead. Now this is going to be represented as an array. If we have multiple checkboxes in here, we want these to be represented as which ID we have basically selected or which value we've selected, which we'll get to in just a minute. So let's go ahead and say X text and records. And at the moment, we're just going to end up with three checkboxes and nothing being output. But what we can actually do in here is we can bind these and use X model multiple times. So we can bind this to records. We can do exactly the same thing for record two and record three. And then as long as we assign a value to each one of these, so let's go ahead and say value one, value two, and value three. Let's just fix that up. What we should now see is each of them being chosen. So for example, if these are a list of users that you want to perform an action on, like delete them or update them, you can now just do multiple of these make sure this is an array and then you get back an array of all of the values that have been selected you don't actually need the name and the id on here as a unique factor so if we get rid of these that's still going to work in exactly the same way they don't determine how this works and you can see it still works so let's kind of dive into this a little bit more and look at a more practical example of this so let's just say users let's just say this was a list of users that we wanted to delete and this was Alex, this was Billy, and this was Mabel. Let's go over and it will look a little bit messy at the moment, but that's fine. So let's say that this was a form now 
and we wanted to submit this so x on submit and then console log which values need to be deleted obviously that would go through to an api or something like that let's create a method out in here i'm going to keep this in lot uh, in fact let's move this down it does tend to get a little bit messy so let's pull this down real quick and we can pull that down as well and let's just call this delete users and then we're going to go ahead and console log first of all on this users and we'll just say delete users so that's going to give us the values that we actually want to delete once we've selected them let's go ahead and create out a button in here with the type of submit and just say delete so now what we do is if we just bring up our console and records is not defined yeah so of course this just needs to change over to users and there we go so if i click alex and billy we delete well we haven't done a prevent so let's do that now let's choose alex and billy again and there we go so we've got a object now with one and two so when we send this down to our api that's going to contain the values one and two within an array so we know which ones to delete because alpine is reactive what we could also then do is if we had a initial object of users that we were working with we could remove them from that list we're not going to go into that now because we'll look at more examples like that a little bit later uh, for now we just want to kind of focus on the actual form functionality okay i'm going to go ahead and comment all of this out here and let's move on to look at drop downs so let's imagine that we had a select inside of here and options to choose a plan to subscribe to so we're going to have an option in here for for example yearly and let's give the value of this to yearly and we also might want a monthly option as well so again change this to monthly now inside of our select you pretty much guess what we need to do we are just going to go ahead and attach or we can do this in x data we're just going to go ahead and attach a plan value to either an empty string or a default let's change this to an empty string first just to see what happens inside of here and let's use x model to hook this up to plan selects are pretty simple because they only have one selectable value this does work with multiple selects as well uh, but let's take a look at that a little bit later so now when we choose this it's just going to work as we would expect now let's actually output the value of what we have chosen so just output plan at the moment this is nothing but yet we have a yearly option inside of here what we'd probably want to do is have an empty option in here saying please choose if we wanted to have that by default and then when we do select this you can see we get the value back in here and of course when you submit this you can send through the plan to your api or do whatever you want with it now to make things a little bit friendly what you could do is have x text in here to actually output an expression we can have two backticks use interpolation to say you've chosen the plan oh, plan plan there we go and that doesn't work at the moment but of course we could fix that up with an x show or an x if and when we change this you can see that changes now again what we could do is attach x show to say well if a plan has been selected show this text so now it will only show when we've actually chosen something when we go back to please choose it disappears now again we have two-way data binding here so if you wanted a default option to be selected and you didn't want a please choose default you could just set this to monthly for example and that would go ahead and hook that up automatically so if we give this a refresh you can see monthly is already selected and therefore we see you've chosen the monthly plan okay so hopefully that makes sense in terms of select let's finish off by looking at radio buttons so again we're going to go ahead and output some data in here and let's say we're going to work again with plans so we'll use exactly the same example but just work with uh, radio buttons which is perfectly acceptable so let's go ahead and say plan monthly like we did before let's create an input type of radio out in here and you would use radios usually if you wanted to style these up in a slightly better way rather than having a drop down to choose a plan which is often not very good user experience so we're going to go ahead and say name plan in here let's set the value in here to monthly so pretty much the same as the drop down just different and we're going to say x model plan and again we can duplicate that down change this to yearly 
and that's pretty much it. So again, let's bring back the text that we had in here, paste this in, and that should just work. Let's go over, and there we go. Works in exactly the same way, minus the fact that it's really, really badly styled. So that should have given you a good grasp on inputs. There is loads more over on the Alpine documentation if you want to dive into this a little bit more deeply. But this should be enough to get you going with what you want to build.